morning. My name is Doug, and I'm with the University of Scouting in Leatherstocking House of Upstate New York State of New York. Uh, I'm going to be discussing for a moment or two the challenge of camping with boys and girls in your troops. Uh, I've been doing this for a number of years with high adventure groups, and uh, there are a number of different uh, topics that we should address. All of these can be found as resources online from different sources, and I'll mention a few of those as we go along as well. Uh, what I'd like to start with is uh, a review from Scouting Magazine from uh, February of 2019. Uh, it's a reference that's easy enough to find, but they have 10 questions that are, are related that might show, bear some interest. Uh, the first one, of course, is are, are all Boy Scout programs now co-ed? And it depends on what program you're talking about. Uh, the Cub Scouts are either all or boy-girl packs. Uh, Scouts, 11 to 17, are either all boy or all girl troops. There are linked troops as well. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, the older boys and girls, the Venture Crews, the Explorer and the Sea Scouts, those are uh, typically or maybe co-ed troops themselves. And the other question that comes up, or the next question that comes up, would, why did the BSA decide to welcome boys or girls into the Scouts to begin with? And that turns out that was by, by uh, surveys. Uh, checking out what did the girls want to do. And nearly 90% of the responses from the girls said they want to do Boy Scout stuff. Uh, my family's been involved with scouting for many, many years. My kids were raised in scouting. Uh, my daughters wanted to be in scouting and doing the different activities that their brother did. Uh, so we know the background. There, there was an interest for them and the, the Boy Scouts decided to welcome the girls in as well. It seems to have worked quite well. A linked troop uh, activity would be having a Boy Scout troop and a girls troop as well that can be run at the same time in the same place, might have some of the same committee members, same sponsors, but they're still two separate entities. Uh, although they may share different uh, leadership roles, they may share different uh, sponsors and so forth, but they're still considered to be separate units. Uh, the organization's name is still going to be uh, Scouts BSA. Uh, the members of the units are still called scouts. Uh, it's the same as going to summer camp and saying, uh, what are you doing scout at the moment? Well, it doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl, they're considered to be scouts nonetheless. Uh, the requirements stay the same. Uh, a merit badge earned by a young lady or a young man are going to be identical. There's no difference in requirements, so they're equal. And if you look at the, the basic scout values, the scout law, the scout oath, the uh, aims and purposes of the Boy Scouts. They're no different between men and women. They should be all the same. So there's, that has not changed at all. There's no difference in the requirements of the adults or the Scouts at all. They are the, they are the same. Uh, there are two different versions of the Scout uh, Handbook. I didn't know this until just recently, uh, but the content of the books are the same. Some of the photographs have been changed a little bit to show the involvement of the young men and the young women at the same time. Uh, leadership requirements are still staying basically the same. We still need too deep leadership. We need adult leaders over 21 for activities. Uh, all this is uh, ex explained more thoroughly in a youth protection video or in the guide to safe scouting, which we'll talk about a little bit here as well. Uh, what, uh, one of the recommendations I'm going to suggest for the co-ed or for the, for the male-female groups is that a scout crew, venture post, should come up with some kind of a code of contact, contact excuse me, a code of conduct uh, to begin with. And this can be and should be developed by both the adults and the youth that are involved. It involves a few different things. So the one I'm looking at here was uh, one from scoutermom.com, uh, who's a, a lot more involved in this than I am, perhaps. There are some expectancies for behavior for all crew members. Most of these are common sense. Things like follow the rules, leave no, in no trace camping, be courteous of your, of your uh, fellow venturers and such. There's also a section on co-ed behavior, which again, the first step she's using is use common sense. Be, be respectful and considerate. Uh, where it deviates a little bit and it might need to be stressed a bit more is in activities or incidences where they should be separated. Uh, for example, tenting, restrooms, and so forth. You need to have a code of contact about what should be expected and what will be expected of all the youth and the adults. And again, this can be seen in any youth protection video as well. Uh, in co-ed camping, 
the same thing. Uh, you, sh you should not have, obviously, men and women in the same tents. And this even goes for uh, Cub Scouts would be the exception. I believe Cub Scout parents can be with their, their child. Uh, Boy Scouts, Venture Crews, not at all, not at all. Uh, and then the you know, typical safety regulations, but it would probably be to your best interest to come up with a code of conduct. Again, there are a lot of uh, examples of this online. If you'd like to look, uh, you can find some good references there as well. Uh, the other things that I'm going to take a look at and the challenges of these are for the tenting and for the camping on high adventure troops or on just weekend activities is uh, how should they be set up? And I kind of use the term separate but equal. The Boy Scouts and the girls that are involved in Scouts uh, need to have separate tenting areas. They shouldn't be right on top of each other even. You know, set some distance between the tents. But again, the girls can stay together. The boys can stay together. Uh, even keeping with the, the typical regulations, uh, be age appropriate as well. You shouldn't have more than a two year degree, uh, difference between tent mates. And you certainly the same with the boys and the girls. Uh, adult behavior is the same way. Uh, you, you should be having separate, separate provisions if you're camping for men and women, adults and youth as well. Uh, the privacy should be expected and respected by everyone. This should be made clear well in advance, well up front. Uh, if you're looking back and how that reflects on that code of conduct, uh, visualize that these are common sense rules, but common sense for an adult leader may not necessarily be common sense for a 15 year old. Uh, the rules and regulations that are coming up are based on the guides to safe scouting. A lot of the, the, the scouts probably would not recognize that. And there's no reason at all why these can't be explained why these are reasons. If there are certain safety issues or are there are certain uh, other, any other issues that come up, if they, are, if they are set by the scout leaders, there may be reasons why they are not up for debate with the scouts that are involved. The scouts might not recognize this the, the, about some of the things that just have to be in there for the, according to the guide to safe scouting. Uh, the potential problems that you might have or we might have on our units would be uh, how closely monitored should this be? Uh, if you're at a, an activity and you have boys in a separate, one locker room, girls in another, another locker room or in a camping area, you should be monitoring these areas but not be intrusive in those areas. You don't need to be in there giving visual oversight of everything that goes on in a locker room for changing for swimming suits or something like that, but you should be monitoring, monitoring them and be aware of what's going on in these areas. Uh, the uh, other issues that may come up in, this is true in any scout camp, is uh, the use of cell phones, cameras. You know, be careful that you, cameras are not allowed in certain areas. They shouldn't be in a locker room or a changing room or tenting areas. There's nothing wrong with taking videos or pictures of your campsite and activities, but be very specific on what is and is not allowed as far as being taken to be published on the internet somewhere. It's got to be very, very closely monitored on that. Uh, be careful of public displays of infection, of affection, not infection, affection. Uh, there's there's a, a line that must be drawn in this. There's nothing wrong with boys and girls getting together on these activities, but it's not a, uh, uh, an event where you should have very you know, big boyfriend-girlfriend combination, perhaps. You know, keep things a little bit separate in that er those areas as well. Uh, the same thing, the living areas. If, if you're camping in cabins, there definitely should be a male and female cabin. If you're in one cabin, there should be definitely a divide between where the boys are and where the girls are. And you've got to be, got to be careful that there are off limits, lem, off limits designations. When, is, when and where can men and women be in the same area? Scouts or adults as well. Uh, I recommend in your, in your code of conduct development, be realistic in these. We're dealing with maybe 15 and 16 year old teenagers and their expectations 
and their values are probably not necessarily going to be what an adults are. Feel free to explain why these things have to be done as well. You need to be in these instructions and these regulations, be firm but fair in the enforcement of them. Having a, an incidence where you have to explain yourself, that might not be a problem, but you have to be consistent in your explanations. You can't, you can't uh, change things too much or you're going to confuse the youth that you have involved with you. Uh, all of these should come down to the scouts' core values. The core values of scouting are the same for boys and girls. And that should be expected from everyone as well. Uh, the last part about this is high adventure standards. And this kind of depends on where you're going on your high adventure. Uh, if you're going to a national base like Philmont, they have expectations about what can and can't be done with groups that have both young men and young ladies in them. If you're going out camping in public parks area, national parks or something, do some research first and find out what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, mostly in terms of bathrooms. Are there porta potties along the way? Are there latrines along the way? Is it true wilderness camping where you have to pack it in and pack it out literally? Uh, I would suggest checking on that very well first. If you go into some true wilderness areas and have to pack in and out human waste, that could be a big problem as well. There's, there's going to be problems in there with, uh, uh, you know, how do you handle this? So this could be a completely new, op new opportunity for scouts that are involved. They might not have ever gone through this before. It's a couple of steps beyond leave no trace. When you tell a scout that they're going to have to pack out human wastes, that is going to be a wake up call for a number of them. Men and women have different, uh, have different needs there as well. For example, if, uh, if a woman needs to use the bathroom and there is no bathroom, well, how does she, you know, how does she do this? Well, there are pee, what they call pee funnels you know, so the, that the uh, young ladies or the adults can use to uh, basically preserve their modesty, we'll say that way. Uh, be aware that if, uh, if you've got females in your groups and uh, it comes time for a menstrual cycle, you know, that has to, does that have to be packed in and packed out? How do you do that? You, know, you need to have, be aware of the preparations needed from that. G generally, if that is the case, if there's a, for a, a menstrual cycle coming in, the, the young ladies and the, all the adults should be prepared for that. Take along the materials that are necessary, if whatever the routine is at home, it doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to change at all. It's, it's not a big deal. Half the population in the country is doing this. But it has to be, it has to be expect, acceptable as well. Uh, it's not really an, ex, an issue that need, everybody needs to get excited about at all. It's realistic. It's just something that you need to, uh, as, the, as the scout slogan says, you need to be prepared for it. Uh, some additional information that you may need as you take your linked troops or your co-ed uh, venture crews out on some of these wilderness trips uh, are the things that don't necessarily get addressed at your typical scout meetings uh, concerning uh, what, you have, what, what happens when it comes time to pee and poop, for example. And uh, there are ways that you can address this and ways you shouldn't address it. Probably the biggest way you should not address it is by just ignoring the whole thing and figuring somebody's going to work it out on their own. These activities that might not have ever occurred to you probably should have some kind of a preliminary warning and advice for the uh, youth that you have along with you. They might not have ever done anything like this before. Uh, for example, uh, I'm reading a couple of different references here, but uh, if you're going to be out on an extended trip, you know, many days, a week or so maybe, you want to keep yourself uh, relatively clean and uh, not smelling too bad. Uh, one of the things they recommended is uh, using a pee rag. Yep, basically, after you've gone, take a wipe and clean yourself up a little bit. That Then that wipe can be put into a little Ziploc bag. Maybe after you get to your campsite, wring it out, let it air out, air dry, freshen up a little bit. But it's going to keep you and your underclothes smelling a lot better in the, in the long run. Uh, when you have the boy and girl groups out there, I've found uh, that uh, oftentimes those groups, the men, young men and young women, are better prepared for a lot of this stuff than the groups that are just male or just female. 
neither one of these groups want to embarrass themselves in front of the others. So they will try to do their best to do things properly. If they have forewarning of some of this, these activities, it's going to help out in the long run. The boys will impress the girls, the girls will impress the boys, everybody's going to be happy. And nobody should get embarrassed by any of this. Now, another suggestion, for example, is to use uh, moisture wicking underwear. Cotton's not the best stuff to wear. We've said that in Scouts for many, many years. Winter camping, you don't want cotton because it doesn't insulate and it gets wet and it gets forever, takes forever to dry. Well, same thing with cotton underwear. It gets wet, it's going to take forever to dry. It might start to smell a little bit. You can't take necessarily a week-long camping. You're not going to take seven pairs of underwear with you. You've got to be able to clean these things again. So be careful of that. Use a non-wicking uh, type of material that can be done for that. Uh, another suggestion would be for just basic uh, personal hygiene, take along some sanitary wipes in a Ziploc. Clean yourself up. After you've gone, clean yourself up. It's going to make, in the end, it'll make a lot better than uh, it would be otherwise. Uh, for women that are camping along and comes in with a menstrual cycle, again, don't be scared of this. It's part of nature. Women have been doing this ever since women have been involved. Don't be scared. Be prepared. You might want to find out that if a woman knows that her period is coming up, uh, be prepared for that. Bring supplies that are needed. They could be the same supplies she uses at home every month. It doesn't make any difference. You might want to bring extras just in case. You also should be aware of what happens afterwards. This is a pack it in, pack it out type of a deal. Unless you're in a state park with trash cans right all around the area, you need to pack items back out again. You should be able to do this in a, a fairly watertight, weatherproof uh, item. Nalgene bottles would probably work best. Uh, de dedicate one of these for that activity. Wrap the whole thing up in duct tape, spray paint it black or something, and any used products can be put into there and disposed of later on when they get home. Also be aware, though, that uh, if you're doing true wilderness camping and you're hanging bear bags, you know, bear bags are where anything goes that your bear might be interested in. You know, that includes feminine products. That's going to have to be hung as well. Maybe in a separate bag, but anything that goes to, like, that is in that event, that should be hung as well. Get out of the reach of the animals that are going to be involved as well. Uh, but don't put off and cancel a trip as an individual because you're afraid something's going to happen. You're afraid your period's coming up next week. Oh, I don't want to go because. Go anyway. Go with you anyway. There's no reason why that shouldn't be added on to there. A couple other quick uh, closing things are about... Uh, I thought these were pretty good. Uh, pooping in the wilderness. How do you do that? And a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, bits of advice that I came up with, I guess, was uh, explain what a latrine hole is. If you have to dig a trench and go, explain why. You know, it's not something you want to have to do after the fact. Dig your hole first. Makes a lot of common sense, but, you know, 14, 15-year-olds might not have thought about that at all. Uh, you know, and talk at times about where should you have your latrine hole dug. You know, you've got to go quite a ways out in the, away from your camping area. If it's a public park area, go well out in an area that people aren't normally in. The last thing a group wants to do is come in and set a campsite up on top of somebody else's latrine hole. It's got to be far enough and uh, out of sight enough so that nobody else has to worry about these activities. Uh, these aren't issues that everybody should have to get excited about but they should be issues that everybody is willing to address and be prepared for. I hope this has uh, been adding some things to the activities that you should be prepared for. Uh, again, my name is Doug from uh, Leather Stocking Council of Upstate New York, and I'm glad we could help out with your future activities. Thank you much. Mm -hmm.